Going in games. Hey guys, it's Autowibs, uh, bringing you some gameplay today. We got Andy on the left here playing his five color control list. Uh, very spicy, a lot of good cards. And then on the right we got Josh playing a blue-red devotion list. We're just testing it out. It actually splashes white for things like Boros Charm and Boros Reckoner. Uh, in his hand it seems kind of awkward because he has two blue-white lands, but we actually don't have any regular islands in the deck, and that's just to ensure that every land we play can tap for Boros Reckoner. But Andy's going to get it started here on a Temple of Silence. He's going to scry. See if he leaves it on top or not. He does. All right. And I imagine he's going to pass it to Josh. Josh rips the Cyclonic Rift. Uh, just shows that to us real quick. And he's going to lead off on a Temple as well. Welcome to Standard. Uh, he sees a Frostburn Weird, which is not a land, so that's going to need to go on the bottom. And he'll just pass it back to Andy. And he's got a pretty good grip here. Uh, he's actually going to go down to 18 to play out that Sylvan Karyatid, but... He's just got like some meat real early. He's got a Jace, he's got Chromatic Lantern in there, he's got two Sphinx's Revelations, so he's just got all the gas that he needs. Uh, despite Josh's best efforts, uh, he's just going to rip another Frostburn Weird, but I guess that's fine, he'll play that out. And we got 18 all. Ooh, Andy is going to get a Detention Sphere, which is pretty good. But I guess he has a lot of options here. He's actually going to play out the Chromatic Lantern, I think, and yes, that's what he does, and he's going to untap that, and he's going to tap it differently, because it's not a profitable block, he already has the two lands to pump to kill the Karyatid, so there's no reason to take that life right here. So Josh is going to rip a red source finally, just a mountain, so now we can get things started a little bit on the other side of the field, decide if he wants to play anything first, but it's always better to attack first. So he's going to beat in with the Frostburn Weird and just pump it once. And he'll go to 16. And then get out the Electromancer. Now, Electromancer is in the list because uh, of Prophetic Flame Speaker. And if you ever do get two activations off the Flame Speaker and exile two cards off the top, I mean, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, two cost instants. So uh, if you can make those instants only cost one, you can maximize your advantage that you're getting off of it. And Andy realizes this, so he's going to play out the Detention Sphere on the Goblin Electromancer and just make sure that's not an issue. And he's going to pass it back to Josh. Josh is going to rip a lightning strike, and there's just a whole lot of instants in his hands right now. He needs to kind of find some dudes. It is devotion, like I said. The win condition is Karanos. So you're trying to get dudes out and then just beat face. So yeah, he's just going to swing in, pump again, just for another two. And then try and decide if he wants to do anything. There's no reason for him to. Yeah, because Andy's not really representing much on his side, even though his hand is absolutely insane. And it just got better. <laughs> and that's a spizzle. All to Elspeth. And he's just reminding him that his life total went down to 14 and not 15. But we already knew that because we're omnipotent beings that can see life totals at all times. So I imagine he's just going to run out Elspeth right here because that just seems real good. And he does. Make some dudes. Get some Higgins. Some soldiers. Play them's out. And then just pass it back to Josh. Well, end of turn, of course, Josh is going to smack that Elspeth. For two, take it down to three, and scry, and just more lightning strikes. Lightning strikes three times early in this game. Uh, I wonder if he takes both of these. They're not dudes, so it'd be awkward. But I mean, I guess he does have a lot of damage represented just by those cards, so he's gonna take both. Temple of Epiphany will come off first, and he'll play that out, and he doesn't need to scry again, because obviously he knows what the other card is. Just try and decide what he wants to do here. He's going to beat it again toward Elspeth just to ensure that uh, one of those guys does get blocked. So he doesn't have to deal with all those other creatures. And he's going to kill Elspeth anyway with one of the many lightning strikes that he has. So she gone, and all Andy is left with is two dudes and of course the two Sphinx's revelations that are in his hands. I imagine that's what he'll probably do with this turn. Just leave up one of those Sphinx's. Or he could play out Jace. Yeah, especially if he's playing that tapped, then, I mean, the best you're doing is Sphinx for three, and Jace, you could just play and minus and look at three cards and get the best of them. But it's it's whatever, six, six in one, half a dozen in the other. So he's just going to turn that sideways again. And then just block with the soldier. <laughs> so Josh had, look at, just look at all, there's only two Cyclonic Rifts in the deck, so it is kind of weird that he just has both of them, but it's a good card. It's a better card if you're not stuck on mana like Josh is, but Andy is going to uh, Sphinx for three here, and rip three land. 
uh, which isn't particularly exciting, but I guess it's a little better that you're not drawing those over the course of three turns. And it's not awful whenever you have, well, and that's another land off the top. Uh, it's not bad whenever you have a Jace and a Sphinx's Revelation in your hand, because you just have the opportunity to get so many more cards. So that's the question, Jace or just Sphinx's Revelation again? And it uh, looks like it's just going to be Sphinx's Revelation again. Uh, Josh is just deciding how much he wants to burn him for here, or if he wants to burn him at all. And he does. <laughs> so that'll knock him down by four. And then, oh, another one. Okay, well, that'll knock him down straight to ten. Seven damage. Seven damage at the end of a turn is not bad. Oh, and there's just another Boros Charm. Oh, if he just... <laughs> oh, so he could just, like, conceivably take him down to three right here. He's just showing us that Boros Charm. A little easy now that he has another uh, Sphinx's Rev. So he's just going to go up to 15 again, and that's going to make that card off the top a lot less good. A lot less good. Yeah. And hitting him for 7 whenever he, he's at 10 is a lot better than hitting him for 7 whenever he's at 15. So what did he pick up there? That had to have been better than the last one. Oh, yeah. Oh, he just has lots of stuff. There's a Blood Baron in there. And if you... Ha if you if you've noticed, this deck is almost entirely foil. Is that another Rakdos return on top? Oh, no, he doesn't. Okay, he doesn't have one in his hand yet. That, that, that was a Kronos I saw. Okay, so he's got a Rakdos return on top. He's going to leave that there and just play out another Karyatid for a blocker. And then run out the Blood Baron of Viscopa. Which isn't the best against this deck, just because, I mean, this does, there's no black or white in it, so... And he actually does have Mizzy Mortars and things just to kill it. So, I mean, yeah, he could just, like, swing it with the Frostburn Weird and kill it with the Lightning Strike if he wanted to. So we'll see what he wants to do here. I mean, he could just, he could just bounce it with Cyclonic Rift. Oh, but he's actually going to Cyclonic Rift the Detention Sphere and get the Electromancer back. Well, that's kind of interesting. I don't know why he did that. He only has, what, a Lightning Strike and the Cyclonic Rift in hand. It doesn't really matter that you're casting either of those for one. <laughs> or he's just gonna rip a Mizium Mortis off the top. And look, nope, finally gotta cast that for one. I got on the man in the world. So, yeah. Well, that was just a very timely answer for that. So, yeah. Uh, I guess he just turns both of these dudes sideways right here. And, um, the Electro. No, I guess he just, like, nah, the Electromancer is gonna get blocked anyway. It's not like he can target it. So, yeah. I'll just leave him at the mercy of how much he wants to pump, I suppose. And he's still, and he got another Sphinx's Revelation, not that last Sphinx's Revelation too. But Andy's actually going to block and just say, nope, use your mana like this. And that's probably pretty good, considering that he does have the Boros Charm. And he's just going to lock, lock him out of what he can do. I mean, he still has a Lightning Strike for one, but uh, Andy's like real far into the late game here. He's just, I mean, he has this game exactly where he wants it. Oh, and the fact that he just has that Rakdos return is going to make that better. Oh, but, the <laughs> but there is another Rakdos return on top. Look at that. Okay, so how much is he going to Rakdos return him for here? I imagine that has to be what he does. Yeah. So uh, he's going to Lightning Strike in response, of course, taking him down to 12, but then Josh is going to have to discard the rest of his cards, so he loses that other Boros Charm and that other Cyclonic Rift. So now Andy can just do whatever he wants, really, finally deal with that Frostburn weird. And then just pass it back. Uh, just look at the stuff he has. He has another Revelation, he has another Karanos. And Josh is just living off the top. And Boris Reckoner is not the worst thing, I guess, you can rip off the top. As you can see, he's very easy to cast in this deck. Pass it back to Andy, and I can't even remember, like, uh, well, there's a Jace, I suppose that's good. So now we have two Jaces, so hopefully we'll run one of these out. Start getting on that plan. That's actually pretty good, because you play Jace right here and you plus him up, then uh, someone carried can just be on blocking duty against the Boros Reckoner. And that's like uh, like the most ideal situation ever, because it just has no power, so you're not going to take any damage from that. And Andy already has like all the best cards that he could want, so there's like uh, no reason to need the minus. So yeah, Karanos will drop here, and he actually has uh, five relevant symbols on the board, so uh, he's pretty close to making him active. Josh is going to rip... Uh, oh, Prophetic Flame Speaker. I'm like, is that another Lightning Strike? Do we just get all of them? No, and he's going to play him out. I mean, he does have the uh, Electromancer out, so if he does get the opportunity to pull stuff off the top, then maybe he can get himself out of this hole he's in. Yeah, so uh, he's going to swing at Jace, actually, with both those dudes. The Electromancer will hit Jace for one. It's whatever. 
and he'd take time to untap his million lands that he has. <laughs> and he's going to rip uh, land off the top, so I'll get to draw an additional card off the Karanos trigger. Oh, and Kiora. He just has so many good cards in here. Oh, it's just so exciting. I love watching this deck. Okay, so uh, he just has so much mana to do stuff with. <clears throat> I imagine he'll take Jace up again. And yeah, that's what he does. Uh, just trying to decide. I, he'll probably end up uh, playing out the Kiora. I'm going to do that on the Boros Reckoner, I imagine. The Electromancer? Why would... No, okay, yeah, no. He's like... Mm, yeah, <laughs> he's going to do it on the uh, Boros Reckoner, I think. This is, why would you do it for Electro... I mean, you, it's, you can block either one with Karyatid, so I suppose it's not particularly relevant, but uh, well, maybe he is doing. Everybody just pointed stuff. Do it like I'm doing it on this. <clears throat> that totally comes across on camera. Thank you for that, by the way, guys. And what did he rip? It must have been something unexciting. That is the definition of unexciting at this point. <clears throat> well, he can't attack with anything profitably because Prophetic Flame Speaker is just an 0-3 this turn. So he is going to rip a Karyatid, so he'll smack something down. I imagine it'll be Flame Speaker, yeah. So he'd be left with the Boros Reckoner and the Electromancer, but you just got a Kiora ticking up and a Jace ticking up. Actually, maybe Jace will actually tick down this turn. And he will. <clears throat> well, sorry about that. Okay, so, oh, uh, look at that Detention Sphere. Oh, that Detention Sphere is so good right now that it'll just turn on Karanos. Oh, that's so good. I just love the amount of blue symbols that you can have just playing all the most random things. So let me make sure. Yeah, he's counting it right now, too. Yep, he's like, okay. Yeah, I know. I, he keyed on that Boros Reckoner, but there's absolutely zero reason for him to uh, detention sphere the Electromancer at this point. So yeah, he's just going to make that Boros Reckoner go away. Come on, dude. You can do it. You can do it. Yep, there it is. Good decision, Andy. Very good. Okay, so uh, he's going to bat for six. <laughs> God, Karanos is good. And he still just has another Jace in his hand and the Sphinx's Revelation. Then he gets another Flame Speaker, but that's like legitimately just not doing anything. Yeah, so he's just going to Sphinx's Revelation for six here. This is like going to effectively end the game. Oh, nope, that Supreme Verdict is going to effectively end the game. <coughs> Because he can swing for six and then take him down to three. And I can't imagine Josh can do much after that. Or he's just going to rip a non-land permanent off and just take him down to six right now. Boy, look at that. Look at how, how perfect that is. Gotta love Xaxes, so yeah. And, I mean, getting rid of Andy's one creature does nothing to affect the amount of blue symbols on the board. So Karana's just going to come in for six, and that's going to be the game.